The message today is um, entitled the, the Event So Long Disbelieved. In the days of Noah, the wickedness of man became, went up to heaven, and God told Noah to build an ark for the of himself and his household. Noah preached. Some believed, some didn't. Those who believed were saved. Those who disbelieved were lost. Brothers and sisters, we as God's people are living in these last days. The Bible says as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end. We'll have a very similar experience. So I pray as that the Spirit will lead as I speak to you today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> I ask for your divine presence to be with us as we open up your word today. We ask for your Holy Spirit presence, your guidance. We ask that you'll take full control, understanding that we are living on borrowed time. We are living on the threshold of the eternal world. And I pray, God, that you will prepare people to stand through the storm that's coming. So take full control of the service, take full control of my words, and I pray that the highest place I should desire to be, to be is at the feet of Jesus. But we ask in these blessings we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Sister Janet, you with me? Sister Golan, you with me? Okay. In the beginning, God created a world that was good, good, and very good. But after the fall of man, when the, with the introduction of sin into the world, there was a steady but surely degeneration of the human race, degeneration of immoral power, physical power, intellectual and spiritual power. Also with the introduction of sin, of evil into the world, it took approximately 1,500 years from the creation of the world for the curse to be clearly seen. And the earth, though blighted by sin due to the transgression of Adam and the murder committed by Cain, it was still extremely beautiful in the abundant gifts and blessings of the Lord. It had been a few generations since Adam and Eve had access to the tree of life and with the human race still retaining much of its early vigor and men were still living for six, seven, eight hundred years old. Had that long race of that generation with their rare powers to build, plant and execute, they would have consecra had they consecrated themselves to God, they would have praised and glorified his name in the earth. And would have fulfilled the, 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 the divine purpose to which he gave them life. The word of God in Ecclesiastes says that we must fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. But as much as they were blessed by God. They turned the blessing into a curse. They were seeking to gratify the desires of their own sinful hearts. They found pleasure in scenes of wickedness and violence, and though and with loose passions and sensual indulgence, and the and the need for instant gratification. The world was still in its infancy, yet iniquity, sin, and violence had, had become so widespread that God could no longer tolerate it. God could no longer stand it. God can no longer bear it. Brothers and sisters, it's a dangerous thing when men exhaust the patience of the all patient one. And so the word of God declares, this to our Bibles again as wonderfully read by Sister Crystal, Genesis chapter 6. Let's look at this passage of scripture. Genesis chapter 6. When it's found, let's say Amen. And the Bible declares, and it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of who? God, God saw that the daughters of men that they were beautiful. 
full. And they took them wise of all which they choose. So we understand what caused what 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 caused the flood? What conditions came together to create the flood? It was the intermingling of the marriages of the righteous and the unrighteous. It was the marriages between the descendants of Seth and the descendants of Cain. The marriage between the believers and the unbelievers. And in our day and time, it's the Adventist church when they begin to bring Babylonian style of worship into our system, brothers and sisters. Another marriage is taking place. It's when we begin to marry Adventists with ecumenism. Brothers and sisters, we're in a whole lot of trouble. Notice in verse 3. And the Lord said that my spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he is also his flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and, I, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children, children to them, the same became mighty men, which, which were of all men of renown. Notice in verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was what? Great. Great in the earth. So it wasn't just no regular wickedness. It was extreme wickedness, brothers and sisters. And that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. So one evil thought was quickly followed by another evil thought. And after that evil thought came another evil thought. So all day long you had a cycle of evil. Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made man, that I have made them. God had created man in his image and his likeness. And also created man to be this third witness in this controversy between good and evil. But now man is still not reflecting the image and the glory of God. Now they were reflecting the image and the glory of Satan. And it grieved the Lord at his heart. Notice in verse 11. And the earth also was what? Corrupt, Corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. It's just, it's, my brother sent me a, a text last night. And he said, Iran started striking. Israel started striking Iran last night. Brothers and sisters, we are right there, you know. And let's keep our attention what's going on in the Middle East. It's very important, brothers and sisters. Verse 12, and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh has corrupted his way upon the earth. Now these were the elements or the conditions that came together to create the perfect storm. Thus the earth was ripe for destruction, brothers and sisters. But, but the good news is that amid the darkness, amid the corruption that was taking place in those days, brothers and sisters, there was still glimmers of light. Amen? There were still faithful men like Enoch, men like Methuselah, men like Lamech, men like Noah. And the Bible declares very clear that Noah found grace. Hallelujah. So in a world that's spinning madly out of control, we must find grace. So in a world where corruption is high and immorality is high, brothers and sisters, we must find God's grace. 
Despite all that's taking place, brothers and sisters, we must be fine under God's loving, tender, merciful grace. Or else we'll find ourselves on the other side of the flood. In verse 13 and 14, the Bible says, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with what? F filled with what? Violence to them. And I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 14. And uh, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms, rooms thou shalt make in the ark. And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Now God, 120 years before the flood, he gave Noah explicit and clear direction how to build this, this boat, brothers and sisters. He gave him the directions, brothers and sisters. Can you imagine that this man was building a boat or an ark on dry ground? You see, God is a mysterious God. Because the boat wasn't going to meet the water. But the water was coming to meet the boy. And while the ark was being constructed, he was to preach a direct, clear, distinct sermon that God is going to bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy the for the wickedness of man was great in the earth. It was a message of God's everlasting love. A message of warning. A message of judgment for the world then had entered into God's judgment. And also a fearful message for those that will reject his grace, brothers and sisters. And for 120 years, Noah preached basically one sermon. Repent. A storm is coming. Repent. A hurricane is coming. Save your family. Save your friends. Save your loved ones. Save yourself for a storm is coming. Now the impending global calamity of unimaginable proportions. By the way, the climate change caused the flood. Because they want us to believe that the natural disasters is because of climate change. What caused the flood? Sin. Wickedness of man. So therefore it was the wickedness that caused the flood. Do you think the natural disasters all the time have anything to do with the wickedness of man? Come on brothers and sisters, let us not be deceived in these last days. If the world is getting warmer, it's because of the wickedness of man. Now, if man just turned to God with the true sorrow for sin, true repentance and reformation, God would have turned away his wrath from them just the way we did for Nineveh. You see, God in his mercy, he, he, he gives man time to repent. He gives man time to turn from their evil, wicked ways. But when man refused to turn from their evil, wicked ways, brothers and sisters, the judgments of God are sure to follow. And he sends warning to us all. When the sinner rejects God's mercy and his grace, the time will come when the pleading of mercy will be no longer heard. And the rebellious element that continues to reject his law will be blotted out in mercy to themselves and to otherwise those who will be influenced by their decision. So Noah preach, and he preach, and he preach, and he preach, brothers and sisters. But they thought his message was a delusion. After all, you know, rain had never fallen. You know, you see, they were so busy with the cares of everyday life, every day with the work, every day with the job, brothers and sisters. It happens to us. And they rejected that message of that old preacher of righteousness. Sometimes we get so caught up with the cares of everyday life, brothers and sisters. And we were warned. 
Don't be caught up with the cares of everyday life. They were busy eating and drinking. They were building and planting. Some were conducting a marriage. Some were getting a divorce. It was life as usual until the very day that Noah entered into the ark. So in other words, brothers and sisters, now I ain't saying that it's wrong for someone to go and have a career or pursue a career of whatever they may choose. But the danger lies when we allow these things to preoccupy our minds. The danger lies when we put it on top of our priorities, brothers and sisters, where we should have the kingdom of God and his righteousness as our top priority. That's what the will of God declares. But what? Seek you what? Seek you what? First. And his righteousness and all these things shall be ordained. So if you want to get married, seek first the kingdom of God. If you want to get a house, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Anything you desire in this life from God, he said what? Seek ye first and then the other things. The husband is a thing. The wife is a thing. The chair is a thing. Everything else shall, shall, that's a promise. Shall be, uh, yeah, I'm a trini. That's what I said. Okay. Have mercy on me. Right? So, 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 brothers and sisters, let's put Jesus Christ first. Amen? Amen? Then, there were a class in the days of Noah who first believed Noah's message. But they were waiting to see if other people would accept the message before they made the decision to get on the ark. You know, sometimes a powerful sermon is preached and there's an altar call. And you are convicted of sin. But we're there looking around to see who's going to make the way first to the altar. Before we take our guilt to the altar and ask God to cleanse our heart. But then we are no different from those that were in the days of no waiting to see rain. Before they make the decision to get on the ark of safety. The Holy Spirit was moving upon their hearts in a supernatural way, but they rejected his pleading. Then there were those who believed Noah's message, but convinced themselves that no, it's not going to happen in my lifetime. You know, sometimes you meet folks and you know you tell them about the end of the world, they say, nah, that's some far out if you're not in our lifetime. You heard many times. I heard it many times before, brothers and sisters. They, they thought because they, they, and the reason why they, re, they rejected Noah's message because they wanted God's plan to line up with their own personal plans or their own personal goals. Some thought that they were, that, that they were still young. Some wanted to complete their education. Some wanted to get married and start a family. And some had a strong affiliation for the world. So they wanted to go in the world to see what the world had to offer. Some wanted to dip and dab a little. But saints of God, whether you are young or old, the storm came. Whether you are tall or short, the storm came. Whether you are a believer or not, the storm came. The event so long doubted and so long disbelieved became a reality. They had heaven sent warning. But they refused to listen, brothers and sisters. Did they have signs of the times? Did they have signs of the times? Brothers and sisters, they saw the animals of every description making their way into the ark of safety. They saw birds of all species flying into the top of the ark, brothers and sisters. They had the signs of the time. But they rejected its pleading. The world then stood in wonder at the strange sight. The birds obeyed the call. The monkeys obeyed the call. The donkeys obeyed the call. But the intelligent men rejected God's message. And his messenger. And the question is, could we be making the same mistake today? Could prophecy be fulfilling? Events great and decisive are taking place right before our very eyes and could we just be just the birds going to the, just the animals going to the ark 
We ain't got to worry. And especially if it says, great men of those days were called to just, just say, just put a, a light, a lightness on the event that was taking place. Now, after Noah preached, and he preached, and he pleaded for 120 years, brothers and sisters, they hardened their heart against that old preacher of righteousness. They rejected the message of Noah. And they re in their rejection of Noah, they were also rejecting God by default to the voice of that old preacher. Amen. When you reject God's messenger, it's the same as rejecting God. And then in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1, the Lord had to finally care with a broken heart. Come down all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. And in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. And the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And it was approximately 1600 years after the creation of the world. The Bible says it was by the word of God that the heavens were of old. And the earth stood out of water and in the water whereby the world then was being overflowed with water perish. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition, perdition of ungodly men. 2 Peter 3, 5 to 7. Now, it was when the pleading of God was rejected. It was when his mercy was exhausted and his mercy and his grace withdrawn and the tempest broke and the rain began to fall. This is when they finally realized that Noah's message was in harmony with God. When it was too late. This is when they finally realized that Noah's in the right and they were in the wrong. This is when they finally realize that there is a great I am. And when God sends warning and reproof to his chosen servants, we must take heed. And God means exactly what he says in his words through his messengers, brothers and sisters. It's a dangerous thing to delay obedience to the will of the living God. You see, there's a hidden boundary between God's love and his wrath. When his mercy has been exhausted and his spirit resisted, then the execution of his judgment begins. Men will find out that the same hand that was strong to save will be strong to destroy when we reject his love, his mercy, and his grace. That's what the Bible says. But ye have set up not all my counsels, and with none of my reproof, brothers and sisters, when God gave us his counsel, it's for us to obey. It's for us to apply to our lives. It, I will also will laugh at thy calamities. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as, as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come up upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they have hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They were none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. This is the word of God, brothers and sisters. And councils, dress reform, health reform, speech reform, salary reform, even country living, their council has been given. We are not the fellows of comfortable in these cities. A time will come when these very cities will be centers of destruction and death. So let us take heed to the council. Saints of God, 
It's a dangerous thing for us to play around with our soul salvation. It's a dangerous thing to resist the plea of God's Holy Spirit upon the heart. We can't with safety reject the pleading of God's Holy Spirit upon our heart. We must allow the Spirit of the living God to have full control of our lives. Or else we will be lost. And so the Bible declares that it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the end. And brothers and sisters, here we are. Right at the very precipice of the eternal world. We are right on the brink, brothers and sisters. So much is happening in this world until the present time has been traced upon the pages of history. And we can be assured of that which is yet to come will be fulfilled in its order. We are standing on the threshold of great and some events, brothers and sisters. Jesus is soon to come. Now the event in the days of Noah was what? Talk to me someone. What was the event in the days of Noah? The flood? What is the event in our day and time? What is the event in our day and time? Why are we scared? Why are we seven day Adventists? It is the national Sunday law crisis. We are, can I be, are, we, are we straight away from these truths that we have? Don't, don't be scared. It's the national Sunday law crisis. So the question remains Is the Sunday law far up? You sure? Okay. Another question Is the Sunday law imminent? Or are we on, or is it on the or are we on the heels of the national Sunday law crisis? Let me read to you a very powerful statement here from God's messenger. Brothers and sisters, if, if you're brother Warrington, whoever's sleeping, wake up now. <laughs> Alright. Here, here to heretofore, those who are presenting the truths of the third angel's message has often been regarded as what? May yeah. alarmist. You're just blowing, you're just blowing, blowing hot air. Right? The prediction that religious intolerance would gain control in the United States of America and that church and state would unite to persecute those who keep the commandments of God have been pronounced groundless and absurd. It is foolishness you're talking. You see, the thing about I tell people, I tell my clients, listen, one day, this religious freedom that we enjoy is going to go. I'm telling them before it happens. So when it happens, it will have an effect, an impression on their minds. Right? And I'm trying to explain to this guy. He's like, man, you got Jews in this country. You got Muslims in this country. You got Anglicans. You got Hindus. How oh, you can pass a Sunday law in this country? That's foolishness. Can you imagine Noah telling them that a flood was coming? What do you think was? Foolishness is something that the world has never seen. Likewise, when we talk about global Sunday legislation, it's something that the world has never seen. But the storm came, and the Sunday law is coming. The motherfucker is here already. It has been confidently declared that this land could never become other than what it has been. The defender of religious freedom. But, conjunction, beautiful. As the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated. Deven, hallelujah, deven so long doubted and disbeliefs seems to be approaching. And the third angel's message will produce an effect which it couldn't have before. You know why it will produce an effect? Yes. Because you told them before. So I'm saying there are folks out there who really don't understand the prophecy the way we have understanding of it. But brothers and sisters, tell them before. They may doubt you. They might say it's foolishness. Tell them before. It's going to have a great effect when the latter rain shall be poured on. Next quotation. It has been shown that the United States is the power represented by the beast with the lamb-like horns. And this prophecy will be fulfilled when the United States shall enforce Sunday observance 
which Rome claims to be as a special acknowledgement of her supremacy. But in this homage to the papacy, the United States will not be alone. Right? The influence of Rome in the countries that once acknowledged her dominion is still far from being destroyed. And prophecy foretells a restoration of her what? Power. And who, by the way, who are the countries? Europe. European countries, right? The old names, the Alamanis and the Saxons and the Burgundies, right? I saw that while I here, I was wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Now notice, notice this brothers and sisters. Notice. Hello, Jeremiah. Thank you for the information. European Sunday Alliance. The event so long doubted and disbelieved seems to be approaching. Gina, please read for me. The European Sunday Alliance organized a breakfast seminar this morning with MEPs, commission representatives, trade unit, uni, unionists, mm -hmm. policy experts, and faith-based advisors. The meeting was entitled, The Importance of Sunday Protection in U EU Policy Initiatives on Mental Health and Loneliness. Stop. So you see where they're taking it. Brothers and sisters, listen to me very carefully. All right? Go ahead. This European Parliamentary Breakfast, hosted by Miriam Lexman, MEP, EPP, and Tomas Zetkowski's yeah. MEP, EPP, was held in support of the European Sunday Alliance campaign. Right, so remember, Inspiration declared that in, in, the, in, in the countries where Rome used to once control, her influence is still there. And now we are starting to see Shadows of Show his head. Go ahead, my sister. The European Sunday Alliance invited the stakeholders to discuss the role of synchronized free time as an antidote to mental health issues and loneliness. MEP Miriam Lexman, Slovakia, who has long been supporting the Alliance and acts as its sponsor, gave opening remarks together with MEP Tomas Zekowski, Czech Republic, who co-hosted the event. Okay, go ahead. FAFCE's most recent board resolution focused on this very topic, declaring that families are the best allies for young people in the context of the mental health crisis. The resolution called on European institutions and member states to promote a culture of life, solidarity, and community that can help the youth in fostering trust in the future while coping with economic, social, and cultural obstacles. Mm -hmm. Moreover, it called institutions to recognize the role of civil society, particularly families and family networks and associations. So you seen how they you seen how they're putting the Sunday Alliance together? The Mental health, families. Notice gonna be good again. Go ahead, my sister. Reiterating its support for the European Sunday Alliance, FAFCE <laughs> used the resolution also to repeat its demand to establish the Sunday as a weekly day of common rest. Thus, favoring family and social cohesion. The event so long doubt and disbelieve is approaching. Go ahead, my sister. Stefan Eirich, president of the German Catholic Workers Movement, <laughs> linked the rise in loneliness to a decline in empathy. He described the phenomenon that the more lonely people are, the less empathy they are able to have mm. and the less they empathize with the vulnerability of others. Antonella Synagoga, expert on parish and family from the Salesian Youth Ministry Department, advocated for synchronized free time to support families. This is particular, sorry, this is particular pertinent 
in tackling the mental health crisis among young people. Hendrik Meerkamp, Senior Policy Advisor at the European Confederation of Independent Trade Unions, said that loneliness is worth fighting against. Ensuring a common rest day is the way to allow families and communities to spend quality time together. That's my words. The event so long doubted and disbelieved is here. What does that tell us? Now, as God gave Noah a message to proclaim to a dying world, so he has given to us, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, a message to preach to the dying world. It's the everlasting gospel. It's the three angels' message that must be proclaimed with power to every nation, to every kindred, to every tongue, and every people. Sing with a loud God voice, fear God, and give glory to Him. And this is why we say that Adventists exist. If we don't understand this, you might as well just give up the faith. But once you call yourself a Seven day Adventist, it's your obligation. To proclaim this message, which, whichever platform you may have, whatever which in your family, your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, find some way to let folks know the truth for this time in which we are living. Because brothers and sisters, it has it has it has begun. Now we who are living in this last generation earth, we are on the verge of these solemn events. We are on the verge of these great events. But the question remains, how would this Sunday law unfold? Quickly, I want to go over a couple of quotations. Right? Or what condition must exist in the world for folks to say we need a Sunday? Worship. Because under regular circumstances, folks don't say no. It's against the Constitution. But given the right circumstances, given the right environment, you'll be Surprise how quickly people call for a Sunday. Now, inspiration declare very clearly. But before I even go there, um, sometimes I got folks sending me stuff saying, let's pray for the president because the Pope is trying to get him to pass the Sunday law. I read really, it, but I don't really pay it to mind. But based on what I've read on inspiration, that's not how this thunder is going to come. We, we're going to see an increase in natural disasters. Whether it be man-made or whether it be natural. We're going to see an increase in disasters in the world. Notice, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, As he sat upon the mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus and so I said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Because we are living in a time of deception. For many, how many? Shall come in my name saying, I am a seven day Adventist. And I am, and I am, and I shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. Have we seen wars and rumors of wars? All these things must come to us, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. And all these are what? Brothers and sisters, if you are sleeping, this is being fulfilled right now. Just look at Gaza. Just look at Lebanon. Just look at Russia. Just look at the economic situation. Look at the crime. And tell us, are we not at that point of the beginning of the world? The beginning of sorrows? God's people will know. Notice. And many what? False prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But hallelujah, he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexities. The sea and the waves roar in men's hearts. 
filling them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken we go to a couple of quotations and then bring it home here sister we have been looking many years for your Sunday law to be enacted in our land and now that the movement is right upon us we ask will our people do their duty in the matter can we not assist in lifting the standard in calling to the front those who have regard for their religious rights and privileges the time is fast approaching when those who choose to obey God rather than man will be made to feel the hand of oppression. Shall we dishonor God by keeping silent while his holy commandments are trodden underfoot? Question. Another quotation. What Satan is about to bring up on the cities? Right? While appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring what? Disease and disaster until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. So, brothers and sisters, serious job. This, this prophecy is already being fulfilled in Gaza. Right? Even now, but not only there, but it's coming to all cities. Even now he is at work in accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes, terif terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves and earthquakes, in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. And then they, and then they say it's climate change. You see, Satan has found a way in which to hide it. He has found a way in which to remove the fact the wickedness of man displaying it and says climate change. Some say the act of God, right? He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. He imparts a deadly taint to the air and thousands die by corona. These vegetations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. Are you with me? Yeah. In seeking to cast contempt upon the divine statues, Satan has perverted the doctrine of the Bible, and errors thus become incorporated into the faith of thousands who profess to believe the scriptures. The last great conflict between truth and error is but the final struggle of the long standing controversy concerning the law of God. This behind in heaven. Upon this battle we are now entering. A battle between the laws of men and the priests of the Jehovah. Between the religion of the Bible and the religion of fable and tradition. Yes. Upon this battle we are now entering. What's the date today? Yes. October 26, 2024. It's just 180 years since the great disappointment on Tuesday, brothers and sisters. Yes. We are right there. And this is the fourth generation. Everything is significant. It is on the law of God that the last great struggle of the controversy between Christ and, and Christ and his angels and Satan and his angel will come. And it will be decisive for what? So you can run to Trinidad. You can run to Jamaica. You can run to nowhere. It has come upon every nation upon the earth. But you can be in Christ Jesus. Amen. Many, many what? Responsible position will not only ignore and despise the Sabbath themselves, but from the what? Hold on, hold on. Sacredness. You want to, years ago when I used to read this, I used to look at Sunday churches. No more. Even Adventist churches. Is this here? This represents even represent Adventist churches. From the sacred desk, will be urged, will urge upon the people the observance of the first of the week.
leading traditional custom on behalf of this man-made institution. But what Jesus said, in vain do they worship me for the teacher's doctrine. The, the, what? The teacher, what? Come, come on, it's meant for the, the teacher's tradition above the word of the God. They will point to what? You see where it's going? To the land and sea, to the storms of wind, the flood, the earthquakes, as destruction by fire, right? As judgment indicating God's displeasure because Sunday is not sacredly observed. So you lie on that old sea? When they're pushing for this climate change bill to shut down the world because one day to save the environment, this is where it's heading. These calamities will increase more and more. One disaster will follow close upon the ease of another. And those who make void the love of God will point to the few who are keeping the Sabbath of the Four Command as the ones who are bringing the wrath upon the world. Brothers and sisters, you better believe it. You will be blamed for everything that happened. This falls to the Satan's device that he may ensnare the unwary. One, one more quotation. The time is right upon us. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth. When the angel of mercy folds her wings and departs, Satan will do his evil deeds. He had long wished to do storms and tempests, war and bloodshed. In these things, what? Satan's a wicked fellow, you know. And thus gathers in his harvest. And so completely would men be deceived by him that they will declare that these calamities are a result of the desecration of the first day of the week. From the pulpits of what? Popular churches. Where we heard the statement of the world is being punished because Sunday is not honored as it should be. And it will require no great stretch of the imagination for men to believe this. You know why they won't believe it? Because it's happening right before their very eyes. They are guided by the enemy and therefore they reach conclusions which are entirely false. You see, sister, sister Golden, you ain't going to hear this at Flatbush. <laughs> You ain't going to hear this in no conference church. But this is what we need. This is what the people, people need pressure to for this time to show us where we are in prophetic history. And when you see where we are, brothers and sisters, it makes us not fall and say, Lord Jesus, I'm not ready. Please make me ready. That's what the prophecy does. It's God's alarm system to wake up men and women to the impending danger. And their soul salvation. That's what prophecy does. But if you're not hearing prophecy, how would you wake up? I saw that our bread and water would be sure in the time of trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we should not lack nor suffer hunger. The Lord has shown me that some of his children will fear. But they see what? Is this happening? Yes. Better be a right there. Right? And they would but then they will buy food and lay it up for the time of trouble. No. We have to prepare for the little time of trouble. This year is talking about the great time of trouble. The great time of trouble, there's no preparation. Right? The little time of trouble, you get a, you get your little country home, you get your food, you get your garden, right? That's the little time of trouble. And you make sure you're a little independent of the system. But when the great time of trouble comes, all that is gone. It's just your faith alone, right? Then a time of need, I saw then that they go to the food and, 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 food. and look at it. And it had bread worms. I was full of living creatures not fit for use. Alright. Should I touch this here? Alright, alright. We're talking about how when Satan turns his wrath on God's people, right? Let me touch this quickly. As men depart further and further from God, Satan is permitted to have power over the children of disobedience. He hurls destruction among men. There is calamity by land and sea. Property and life are destroyed by fire and flood. Satan resolves to charge this upon those who refuse to bow 
to the idol day which he has set up. His agents point to 70 witnesses as the cause of the trouble. Who is his agent? Don't be surprised. I'll have preached to man last month. Don't bless some of your own brethren coming after killing you. All right. <laughs> These people stand out in defense of the law. They say they desecrate Sunday. Were they compelled to obey the law for Sunday observance? There will be a cessation of these terrible judgments. Calamities will come. Calamities most awful, most unpredictable. Unexpected. And, uh, sorry, unexpected. And these destruction will follow one after, one after another. If there will be... Read for me, please. If there will be a heeding of the warnings that God has given, and if churches will repent... Returning to their allegiance, then other cities may be spared for a time. But if men who have been deceived continue in the same way in which they have been walking, disregarding the law of God and presenting falsehoods before the people, God allows them to suffer calamity, that their senses may be awakened. The judgments will be according to the wickedness of the people, and the light of truth they have had. If they have had the truth according to that light will be the punishment. Amen. Alright, so let me bring it home here, brothers and sisters. As God gave Noah a message to preach in the midst of darkness, so he has given to seven dead message a message to proclaim to the inhabitants of the earth right before Jesus comes back to the earth with power and glory. It's the third angel's message. It's a revelation of the character of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And right before Jesus comes back to the earth with power and glory, the world will get the greatest revelation of the character of God, which is the character of love. love. And the earth will be enlightened with the glory of God. No, that, that's, not, that's my writing. That's not sister way, right? Now, the last message, this is her writing, the last message must be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. The train of God are to manifest his glory in their own life and character. They are to reveal what the grace of God has done for you. Amen. Amen. So in our very lifestyle, Christ justified us at the cross, and he's in the most holy place today, sanctifying us. So in other words, what Christ is doing in the most holy place is removing wickedness from our hearts. Every day, by the grace of God. So when your birthday come, al come along and you look back at last year, you must be a more loving person this year. You must be more kind, more patient, more generous, more giving. Brothers, so all these are the attributes of Jesus. But when he comes back and you look at us, who you want to see? Himself. He's want to see himself. And until that happens, he cannot come back. God want to see himself in us. So when people visit Midnight Cry, God has to shake up this church. In order that the spirit could flow through this place. We, 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 we know. Those of us, we know. So now God wants to see us. The humility of Christ. The patience of Christ. The long so Some of us, we are too sharp. We need to be more patient. More kind. Not, not everybody where we at. Not because the master eats a piece of chicken. I don't eat chicken. But if he eats a piece of chicken, you pray and you encourage him to do better. Don't condemn people. The heart of God's last message. Several have written to me inquiring. Is the message of justification by faith? Is it the third angel's message? I have answered. It is the third angel's message in a nutshell. The Lord in his great mercy. Has sent the most precious message to his servants Wagner and Jones. This message to bring before more prominently before the world. The uplifted saviour. The sacrifice for sins of the whole world. It presented justification through his faith and his surety and invited the people to receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which is made manifest in obedience to all of his commandments. So if you're not 
obedient, you have not received Jesus Christ. Because long as you receive Jesus Christ, it will manifest itself in obedience. And not forceful obedience. But loving obedience. You love it. Jesus loves to do it. Why God gave us this message? Because many have lost sight of Jesus. Some folks, I'm all for the reforms. But don't tell me your dress is sweeping the floor and you ain't got no love in your heart. Don't tell me you ain't eating meat but you're eating people. No, brothers and sisters, we must manifest the love of Jesus Christ. Patience and kindness. His merits. They need to have their eyes directed to his person. You see, the letter of the law can save none of us. It's the person of the law is going to save us. The law became a person. And that's where we get our merits from. Not from the letter, but from the person. His merits and his changes love for the human family. All power, hallelujah, is given to his hands that he may dispense rich gifts unto men. In parting, hallelujah, in parting the precious gift of his own righteousness to the helpless. Read it for what? Read it for say? Read for me, brethren. In parting the precious gift of his own righteousness to the helpless human agent. This is the message that God commanded to be given to the world. We ain't giving the world. We ain't giving the world the opposite power. We letting the world know what Christ has done for us. The opposite power is trying to take us on a false gospel to, uh, to accept a false day of worship. But the true gospel brings us to his commandments, Christ's righteousness, his, 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 his purity of character, and we are it's manifesting and keeping the seven day holy. This message God commanded to give to the world, it is the third and better, which is to be proclaimed with loud, a loud voice attended but your point of a spirit in a large measure. I'll stop there today. Amen? Amen. This is the message. More no had a message. And God has given us a message. So as we look and we see the storm approaching, we saw very clearly what's going on in Europe with the Sunday Alliance. And brothers and sisters, it's coming to our doorstep near us. We saw that we will be blamed for everything that's coming upon the world. Mm -hmm. And many seven day Adventists, many men who we, many great, few great men, are going to stand up in this crisis, brothers and sisters. Many going to walk away from the faith when persecution comes. She said, in the time of peace, many came into the church. But when persecution comes, they will walk away from the faith. But thank God there will be a remnant. Hallelujah. There will be a people that will stand up and reflect the glory of God perfectly, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. So let's stand for our feet if the message was received today. And I'll call on. I'll call. I need someone to give me a prayer. Of, Elder Merkel, give me a prayer of reconsecration, dedication, prayer of revival and reformation, especially as we live in these last days.